Peter, it's really nice to see you again. I trust you're keeping well this early in 2021. Yes, Rodney, thanks. I hope you also had a good start into the new year. I did. Thank you, Mark, very much. Looking forward to spring. So you and I were just talking about the landscape in Switzerland post-Swiss tax reform and a number of really interesting uh, points you were making. Can, can you elaborate more on those, please? No, sure. Happy to do that, Rodney. So I think we're now in year 21. So the Swiss tax reform is kind of behind us. Most uh, companies have now moved into a new world where they're subject to ordinary taxation. Some of them benefit from some of those transitional rules that we spoke about in the past. And I think what's now interesting to focus on is what does that new world look like? Uh, and it's a situation where many of our cantons have now very low ordinary rates. They are between 12 and 14 percent, uh, including all levels of taxation, uh, which means that uh, you don't no longer have to worry about any you know, special regime that you're benefiting from that might uh, create some issues, but it's just ordinary taxation, no strings attached. And we see that that's receiving interest uh, in the market. So it's interesting. And how do you see businesses changing their profile in Switzerland, if at all, as a, res as a response? We still see that uh, many groups maintain the presence that they built in Switzerland, particularly with the uh, headquarters that manage uh, NEMA or the rest of the world business, uh, often for US groups, but also in, in other uh, examples. What we also see is that um, companies are starting to look at um, setups where they move smaller teams into a place like Switzerland. Uh, we have started calling this a center of excellence approach. Mm. It, it basically means that you identify an activity, a function within your whole organization, that you have some business need around where you want to do some changes from a business perspective. And I think a good example is uh, sourcing and procurement, where businesses make a decision that they want to go differently about strategic sourcing, which often means then to identify the right people and then to put them in a place uh, that is, as we call it, sustainably low tax. So then you move such a team into Switzerland, they operate from Switzerland, they create the benefits and create the value for the organization. And then what's important uh, is that such a team uh, then is charged to the group companies that benefit from such an activity, basically based on the value that they create for the group. So it's a value-based fee, uh, obviously charged to a number of countries that typically would have higher rates than Switzerland. And that's how you can still then at the end of the day, achieve a tax benefit for the group overall. Interesting, and I can imagine because, uh, you know, last year we surveyed tax leaders uh, quite extensively. And we did find this trend towards entity and business simplification as a result of COVID. And I can only imagine, Peter, that that perhaps has also hastened this trend to you know, centralization, co-location, um, just bringing people together, not to mention the, uh, the need to focus on DEMPI. Uh, going forward as well, making sure you have the right substance in the right places. Yeah, I fully agree with you. And I think the main, uh, the main feature is that these are not tax projects. Yeah. These are business projects that are then brought together uh, strategically um, with, a, with a tax opportunity. And I think that's why we will see that they work as opposed to maybe the, the tax projects that we had in the past, but we we'll know that the world has changed in the meantime. Yeah. And so as, as businesses look to establish these you know, centers of excellence, if you will, what are the most common things that people ask you about? Well, obviously, uh, one thing is uh, whether um, you know, they can bring the people into Switzerland, which in non-COVID times, uh, obviously, normally, does work and uh, as you know, Switzerland also is a good place to bring also your senior people to. It's, uh, it's usually very popular 
with uh, executives and, and senior people in our organizations. Uh, then obviously they want to know what's the tax rate that we then have to pay on that. And uh, it's typically you can achieve a 12% rate. Hmm. And if things are done properly, you might even be able to benefit from some type of uh, immigration step up around such a center of excellence, depending hmm. on circumstances, which means that for the first five or 10 years, you even have an additional tax shield and you pay even less current tax than, than the 12% that are already quite low to start with. Interesting, a nice add-on to the business project. So um, look, I know tax reform in Switzerland was quite substantial. So for those folk that have operations in Switzerland and maybe I don't know, are in the mindset of the old rules or perhaps are digesting the transitional rules or stuff like that, or perhaps aren't focused on the reality today. What sorts of, you know, not to put you on the spot, but do you have a couple of recommendations of, of thoughts for folk like that? What should people be thinking about perhaps today? I think, you know, Switzerland uh, also has moved to uh, a world where uh, structures have to be filled with substance, and um, Switzerland is also, I wouldn't say scrutinizing, but certainly looking carefully at situations uh, that do not show appropriate substance, and we clearly recommend our clients that they do have appropriate substance and people in the country, and not just allocate profits to Switzerland, because the likelihood in an age of transparency uh, the likelihood that that profit allocation might be uh, scrutinized uh, at some point in the future um, is increasing like day by day. So structures have to be filled with the, the relevant people and have to be lift, as I think we've been saying it for quite a while, so that they uh, are indeed uh, defendable. Switzerland still has a number of um, I think advantages over some other uh, jurisdictions, not being a member of the EU. Uh, we are, for example, not forced to um, implement any of the ATAD rules that we've heard about a lot mm. in the last uh, months and years. So we can, for example, still make payments to lower tax uh, jurisdictions that are deductible. Um, we do not uh, apply any of those anti-hybrid rules um, today. So um, there's still maybe a little bit more uh, room for maneuvering uh, with Switzerland, uh, although obviously we, uh, we implement uh, what the OECD as a basic framework um, has, um, has issued. Interesting. Well, Peter, that's, that's an interesting trend, the centers of excellence point. And uh, I'll certainly have to come back to you and hear what else we're seeing in the landscape. You know, thank you very much for your time. It's very interesting to catch up and hear what's going on in Switzerland. Pleasure as always. Okay, well, you have a good day. And you, bye, thanks.